Hello everyone, this is General Hangardy. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. So, Panzer King and I got up really early and we poured the coffee and everything and we we're all excited we were going to play Axis Split. Um, and uh, things have kind of changed on here since we, we were going to play. So, uh, like I was looking at the board, uh, I had it set up for the first time yesterday. And I was thinking, geez, this doesn't look very balanced. And I'm showing you now, like if you want to know what it looked like, I made a video yesterday. Um, we, we've already moved some of the pieces around. But uh, there was a video that I made last night and uh, it shows everything. So most of the stuff is in the place that, that uh, comes with the setup. Uh, we've, we've moved a bunch of stuff around in Russia up there. We've moved some stuff around down here. Um, and that's about it so far. We thought we would uh, make a video documenting this process because um, really, uh, when Robert did the East versus West expansion, he didn't come up with a setup, even though there is a setup for it. Uh, basically what he did was he took one of his games, one of the ending of his games and said, okay, um, uh, let me devise a, a game based on this. Uh, and so what it was for really is not really a setup for you to play. He, he never meant it to be part of the expansion set. It just mistakenly got put in there. Uh, really what it is and uh, and it's still viable definitely uh, so you play the game and the Axis win the game well then the Germans face uh, the Germans and the Italians face off against the uh, uh, against the uh, the Japanese right uh, so it's a brilliant idea and I love it and uh, we both love it here but um, it's just that how his game ended here doesn't uh, didn't really look uh, balanced and the other thing that we problem that we have is that there's only two of us so how are we going to get excited about playing the Americans and the FEC and the UK and and all that other stuff but really all we want to do is be the Japanese and, and the Germans and and kick the shit out of each other right so so we we, we, we talked about it for a couple of hours uh, and talked about the event that we we're having in a, in a couple of months from now that we'll, we'll get into uh, in subsequent videos. But um, we talked about it and thought, you know, how could we make this so it would be like a, a, a truly a, a two-player game? And it was really, really difficult uh, to, to try to make it into a two-player game because you basically have to wipe out the rest of the world in order to do that, right? Um, and like, I mean, how, how can you do that plausibly, right? So, uh, so then we started coming up with... Uh, a narrative like how how we could make it so that uh, the other guys completely surrendered so that there would be uh, a neutral third party and how what would that look like and, and how would that play out if there was two players so we thought okay well we could we could try to come up with a two-player game and a three-player game based upon Robert Hatcher's uh, axis split scenario where the Germans and the Japanese are going to square off uh, so have it so that there's a three-sided game where you you do have some some uh, free players left uh, like Americans and, and uh, Commonwealth players maybe some French in there and then you have the Japanese and then you have the Germans and the Italians right um, but anyway we thought we'd bring you along for this process uh, rather than playing this game out which we we weren't too excited about like we thought okay what if, uh, you know, to try to make the game go faster, you see that big pile of Russians up there. We thought, well, what if we just align the Russians to the Germans and we align the FEC to the Japanese and align the, the Anzac to the Japanese? Like that would at least make the game go faster for us with two players because that would take three of the nations out in, in for every turn, right? So that would, that would streamline the game for us. Um, so that was, you know, like that was a good start, and that's what started us down this road to thinking about all of this, right? Um, but anyway, so we, we called Robert up on the phone. We had him on speakerphone there, and uh, now he's all excited about this. So what we want to do is we want to have, like, the, the original axis split is at the end of your game, and it starts in 1945. What we would like to do is start it in 1946. Uh, so... Uh, the premise of, of the thing is, as this is what we're working on so far, is that uh, America didn't develop the bomb, Germany did. So Germany drops a bomb on London, right? And the UK surrender, and the Americans surrender, like they, they, they don't really, you know, like they, they don't lay down their arms or anything. They just say, okay, yeah, you got us, you know, 
Germany threatens Washington with a bomb. Man in the high castle sort of scenario, right? So then the Americans go back to North America. They go back to the United States. Uh, they have some holdings down in, in South America. And then here in, uh, here in Russia, like the, we're just starting this here. So uh, we, we did look and there's a lot of uranium mining going on in, in Kazakhstan. So we figured that the Japanese would, would be there. In, in uh, Robert's scenario, they made it all the way up to here. So we moved those guys back a bit. And uh, the Ural Mountains here, that's a big divide. So the Germans are on this side. Uh, the Japanese are on that side and then we're gonna have to move everybody else around uh, Italy's still in it, but uh, sub-saharan Africa. That's gonna be um, Like South African. I mean you could call it British, but really it's uh, it's gonna be South African So the, there will be South Africans and there will be Canadians and there will be uh, Americans right now in a three-player game uh, we would try to make it so that that side would have a chance of winning the war, right? Like uh, the, there's three of them and, you know, a three-sided game, just like the regular 1936 to 1945 game. Um, but in a two-sided game, one of the ideas we're bouncing around right now um, is that uh, they would be a true neutral. So like, uh, for instance, I would play Japan and he would play Germany. And then when it came the Americans' turn, um, what would that look like? Maybe like in the original risk there, there was a, a two player game there where you had a neutral and the neutral didn't really do anything, right? Um, it just, uh, like you, you, the other guy just defended for those. Uh, so how could we do that in this game? Like one of the things we could do is like collect the Americans income. Let's say it was 20 IPP, you know, then, uh, each side, Japan and Germany would, would get to spend uh, 10 of those IPP and try to put units where we thought would uh, would would harm the other player like the Japanese would want to put the, their their units uh, American units over here in the East Coast and the Germans would want to put their units over there where it's going to screw up the uh, Japanese the most right and the same with uh, the British like uh, in, in Canada and in sub-Saharan Africa you know like we'll uh, um, we'll do that somehow. So the premise is that uh, the Africans didn't really surrender. Like they, they, they didn't feel that much of an affinity towards the, the British, even though the British had surrendered. But the FEC had surrendered and the, the Anzac had surrendered along with them. So basically the, uh, the, the Japanese would align uh, Anzac and they would align FEC. So that would all be Japanese over here. Then there would be Americans. And then we'd have Germans and uh, and Italians here. Italy would basically have the Mediterranean, like North Africa. Uh, you can see where we put down some roundels here. And then the FEC would have a fight down there against the Africans, right? And then you would have over here, you would have the Americans. And we thought about splitting up the uh, South America three ways, like the Americans would be in the north, the... Uh, the Japanese would be in the West and uh, Germany would be Argentina for sure uh, maybe one other country down there so that there would be a fight over that continent so then we need to come up with uh, the scenario okay well so how do tensions grow so that uh, a year after the war ended in 1946 that's when the war between Germany and Japan uh, commences uh, not in 1945, but they, they win the war and they say, okay, you know, they make a treaty. Okay, you guys stay out of Russia and Japan doesn't stay out of Russia. Okay, you guys stay out of South America and the Germans don't stay out of, stay out of South America. You know what I mean? So tensions uh, are somehow going to rise between the the Nazis and, and the Japanese. And, uh, and then war breaks out in 1946. So that's what we're working on. And uh, to us, that seems like more fun than playing the scenario that wasn't meant to be the scenario for the Axis split. Anyway, so uh, that's where we are right now. And uh, um, we'll make a couple more, uh, like we'll, we'll, we'll just keep playing around with this and we'll keep you along for the ride. Uh, Robert's really excited about it too. He wants to, he, he want, he wants to know what, what's going on and everything. And, He's going to have some input in it as well. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're going to try to make the two-player game first and then the three-player game later. And we don't have a timeline. Like, we don't care if it takes us, 
you know, three hours or, or six months, it doesn't matter to us. Just uh, something we could do. Uh, you got I, something to say, Panzer King? Yeah, I think one thing too, and I, I think Brian's kind of brought this around and mentioned it, but um, regardless of whatever we develop with the two-sided game or the three-sided game, it's also kind of victory objectives oriented too. Like if the Middle East becomes fully dominated by the Germans or the Japanese, is that going to be a victory condition, right? Um, and if we do have a truly two-sided player game over here or even in South America where the Germans and the Japanese, is that a victory condition for winning certain territories or certain spaces or even conquering some of the neutrals? That's kind of one thing too is a timeline. Uh, going to 1950 um, or going further or going beyond, it's my kind of uh, wondering how we should develop that. But I think ultimately, if we do that, at least we know that we have a, a limited time, an objective, and and uh, and we might have to change that for the two-person sided game and the three-sided game. Um, but ultimately, I think it's going to be fun developing it, and we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll get back to you guys later. Alrighty then. So uh, we've been at this for a few hours, and I got to tell you, this is more fun than most people are allowed to have on a Sunday. Most people are, are, are supposed to be taking it easy, but here we are conquering the world in our minds. And it's actually been a lot of fun. And, you know, like you start, you just start throwing units on, right? And, well, that's maybe too much. And, like, we don't know, and it's not balanced or anything, but we just threw down what we thought we should throw down, right? And, uh, like, okay, there's a battle here, you know, like the, this one here, for instance, uh, we're, we're fighting over uh, South America here. So there's a bit of neutrals there. There's some Americans up top. But really, it's between Japan and Germany. Like, that's what we want is, is the fight between Japan and Germany. And, of course, Italy is in on it, too. Now, what we thought was that there would have to be some type of uh, victory objectives, like not the ones that are stocked for the 36 game. Because, let's face it, I mean, there are different objectives for this game. So, you know, like, uh, we don't know what they're going to be yet, but... Uh, for sure, there'd be uh, an objective for taking over South America, maybe, and then uh, for taking out the eastern states. So we tried to make the eastern states and the western states a little, uh, like, pretty close to each other. But we didn't want to make them a mirror image, you know what I mean? We didn't want to make them exact. But we want to make it so uh, like Japan would get some kind of victory objective for taking over the western states. Uh, and then Germany would get some kind of victory objective for taking over the eastern states. And then you see these three territories back here, uh, Texas, Heartland, and Midwest. We thought, okay, that's the buffer zone. Um, that's the neutral territory. That's why there's only militia back there. So in this game, it's a two-player game, and uh, the Americans and uh, the other units like the Canadians that you see up there and what, what's left of the British, they're not going to attack. They're not going to have an actual turn. But uh, we, we were thinking kind of like the neutrals, you know, like the neutrals in the 36 game where, uh, you know, like in 42, uh, a plane shows up here, you know what I mean? Or you put a dude there or a militia. So we thought maybe we could make a schedule up of... Uh, of units that come on the board for them because we don't really want to spend money and and uh, and, and throw units down um, like we're, we're trying to make it a two-player game and we're trying to make it a fairly fast game too uh, so that you could set it up and play it in one day hopefully right and it's just it's a kind of fun little scenario uh, kind of like the America game where you know like it's just uh, the, the the Japanese and the Germans going in to attack the Americans right um, but a little bit different than that, like the, the, they're not on the same side, right? So then, uh, like you see the Canadians, uh, it looks like they're pretty strong and everything, but uh, the, we figured, okay, since the bomb was dropped on Britain and everything, then they kind of went back to Canada, right? Like uh, they, they hightailed it across the Atlantic, just got the hell out of Dodge, right? So there's that there. And then, you know, like the same over out here, um, of course, you have to have a minor factory in Prince George because, you know, <laughs> anyway. Um, like, and there's an Anzac uh, battle cruiser here. Like, we started off, we had just the regular units because this is the version 2 board. We thought, well, it's easy. You know, by the time we're done this, we should have a version 3 set up instead. So we tried to uh, mix and match some of the units. We put some battle cruisers on the board and some light cruisers and, you know, things like that. And there will be a lot more of that going on. 
So the Italians now, uh, they, they've got uh, control for the most part of the Mediterranean and of North Africa. Uh, so what they've got to do for their victory condition of some type, uh, probably take over Sub-Saharan Africa there. Like there's the French here, and then there's the the South African British kind of thing down here, right? So there, there's that for them to do. They've got Japanese just over here. So that's, that's going to be a worry for them. Um, then there's neutrals, right? So we've got Spain. We put the nationalists back into Spain. Uh, the Brazilians are on the board. Uh, we got we got Finnish troops and we got Swedish troops. Of course, uh, the the Swiss. We thought we'd um, we'd keep the Yugoslavs. We put the Turks on the board, and then these ones aren't really worth anything. So you know, there's not really much of an incentive to go after them, right? But then the Japanese, of course, they control the Pacific, right? Uh, so they're going to have to assault the Western states over there. We want them to assault the America, though. Like, that you, you, you're going to have to do that in order to get your victory conditions, right? Um, but also, we, like, we want the fight going on over there, but we also want a big-ass fight going on over here. So uh, we try to make it so that it's pretty equal in here between the Japanese and the Germans, right? And then it goes down into the Middle East as well, right? And then there's a bit of a buffer zone. So the scenario is that uh, that uh, Japan has, uh, like the, the they they agreed with the Germans when they won the war a year earlier to stay in China, right? But they didn't. They they moved out and they moved into Russia, and so that's that's pissed the China, that's pissed the uh, the Germans off. And then same down here. Like, uh, what are you doing in South America? Like, uh, you guys aren't supposed to be here. So that's creating tensions between the Axis powers. I mean, they're not just going to fight each other because it's a game and, and we're the ones left over, right? Like, the, there's got to be a reason for it. And so that's what we think is that, uh, uh, like, Germany just figured that they, they had the right to keep a Russia. And so maybe Japan had started with uh, South America and then, and then the Germans popped up in Argentina and that pissed them off, you know? Like, it's going to take some developing and things like that. But uh, we tried to make it so that um, they do have to go across. Now, we're, we're going to give both of them some uh, definitely more technology than, than, the, uh, than the Americans and those guys. And it doesn't matter with the Americans anyway, right? And the British, because they're, they're just defending in this game. But, like, here we've got uh, attack transports. That's going to help to take out... Uh, to take a foothold in North America, right? And we're not going to have very many troops uh, in North America, but that's where a lot of the victory conditions are going to be, is, is taking over the United States and taking over Canada. We want them to fight over that. We don't want them to just fight over here, you know, and, and just not bother with the other ones. Like, if you're going to win the game, then that's where you got to go to get your victory conditions, right? Um, and, of course, it's only going to be a three-stage development uh, in, in version 3 coming out, so we've got a three-stage development chart here. Um, so they've got the heavy carriers, they've got, uh, they both got heavy carriers, heavy battleships, and attack transports. That's going to make it easy for them to go to America. Now, the Germans already have the bomb. It all started with, in 1945, the Germans dropping the bomb on London. You know, that's what happened to the UK, that's why they left and, and went to Canada and, and uh, uh, but we don't think that the J the Japanese should have the bomb just yet. The one change that we made with the uranium in um, in Robert's setup is we put uranium in uh, in Kazakhstan. There, we were looking, you know, uh, online there, and apparently Kazakhstan has uh, a ton of uh, or lots of uh, uranium, and so maybe that's why the Japanese decided to go there was because they wanted the bomb too. There's no uranium over here. So they needed to go get some. And that's why they're over here in Russia. That's why they didn't leave after the war, was because they discovered uranium there. And, and um, so they've got everything they need. They've got that, they've got the research facility, they've got the heavy water, they just need to build a nuclear reactor, and then they will have the bomb, just like uh, Germany already has. You wanna give her a shot, Panzer King? Yeah, so basically General Hand Grenade did a really good summary of everything. Um, and that's basically how it developed. 
um, just looking at the overall history of it. And we're still kind of working out in some of the details, but obviously the Germans developing the bomb, dropping it on London. Uh, the British fled, um, and you can see they went back with the Canadians there, their exile government um, is hanging out there. Well, we also kind of did that for the Australians too. Australians, they had a few remnants, and we just basically just put one Australian troop on Vancouver Island there and a Australian battle Today. cruiser. <laughs> um, just to give a little bit more realism. Um, down here in uh, South Africa, same thing. You got the French, the Foreign Legion, um, and the British, um, South African, the remnants of them. And like I say, they're just going to be fighting until they're gone and dead. But it gives the Italians something to focus on as well. Um, and they were able to hold Abyssinia. But obviously now Cairo is kind of their new uh, Middle East uh, um, war room capital. So they can uh, control that and they got a factory under construction there. Um, and of course, as General Hanukkah was saying, the Japanese, they landed here on the west coast of um, South America just to expand their empire so that they weren't left out. But by doing that, it agnetized the uh, Argentinians and they aligned with the Germans and that's why we kind of have this backstory here which makes sense you know because the Japanese were kind of the aggressors here they're not quite at war they're not attacking but obviously they're both posturing um, cool thing about this being in 45 46 new German technology you got the Horton um, tactical bomber there and then of course you got the Horton um, intercontinental bomber right there too so just kind of the new jet technology coming out there and of course this timeline uh, the Americans haven't done very well in the war, and they've just retreated to become an isolationist nation. Now they're protecting um, their own interests and kind of leaving the rest of the world to their own devices. And I am a fan of um, the nationalists being just left alone here, um, and Turkey kind of being the open power that we might, you know, roll influence, whether it's the Japanese, the Italians, the Germans. We're going to see how that works out. Um, but yeah, overall... I really had a lot of fun with this whole setup here. Now it's something you know we can actually play, um, and I'm probably going to set this up also in my war room too. Um, and then this way, if we find there's a few things that need to be switched after we play this game or start playing it, then we can go back to my setup, alter it, and then uh, feel maybe we should take some more Americans off because I like General Hand Grenade's idea of having this game over perhaps in six turns, like something you can play in a day where, you know, the Americans, you know, are might have to be a little bit more weaker, but by doing so, that you can finish this in maybe in 1947, 1948, whatever the game, um, however it transpires. Uh, also, I'm gonna give a little prize of my own here, and it's just a few little uh, German buttons and cards that uh, is gonna go with, uh, this contest so I think there's going to be now three things that we're going to be giving out so that's just something there to the winner whoever that uh, may be when we do the draw and I think overall I'm pretty happy with the setup Japan's just a little bit behind the atomic weapon restage but they're getting really close and I like the idea of Kakistan um, having the um, uranium there and giving a reason why the Japanese pushed into this area Kind of breaking their little alliance somewhat to say well we need to start developing this too because our former allies now have the bomb and it's unequal so we got to develop it too so with that being said i think uh i think that's pretty good you have any more yeah words sure so anyway um this is something that we're gonna work on over the next few months and um when we get the version three board then we're going to transfer it to that so it'll 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 change then because there's a lot of bases on the board uh, in version three. So you see a lot of naval bases and things here, like those will be switched into minor shipyards and and things like that. So there will be changes uh, coming, and it will play by the version three rules as well. Uh, we, we didn't have any hope that this game would be done by next weekend or anything, right? Like uh, in order to make it a good game and make it a balanced game. Um, it's going to have to be something that that we we try and we play for a while and and I know Robert's really excited about this. Uh, it was originally his idea having the axis split, but also uh, we we uh, we think it'd be great if you guys chimed in. So in the comment section, if you want to win those prizes that Panzer King has uh, kindly put up, 
uh, leave comments. Say, hey, I think that you should uh, put here this stuff here. I think you got too many stuff, too much in, uh, for the Americans. This would be a good idea if you did this or that or whatever. Like, what do you think? Uh, tell us what you think of what we've done here and what you would do differently. Uh, help us create the narrative to start this war in 1946. We're pretty sure we want to do it in 1946. Like, let's let, let the World War II calm down for a year and then let's start it up uh, again between uh, different sides, right? Now, we've talked about having a three-player game as well, right? So, like, we've pretty much neutered the Allies, as you can tell, in this game. But when we do uh, also make it into a three-player game, it's going to look much the same, but we're going to make sure that uh, those guys have uh, enough power that they can rival one of these others, you know. Like, uh, they're, they're probably going to be weaker than the Germans and weaker than the Japanese, but the Japanese and Germans are going to fight each other, right? So uh, that will be a three-player game. Uh, somebody will play the Allies and somebody will play the the German and Italians and somebody will play the Japanese, right? So uh, anyway, uh, you, all the ideas you got, just throw them at us. We don't care how many there are. We don't care, care how crazy it is uh, because uh, we have no idea what we're doing. We're just having fun on a Sunday. So uh, thanks for joining us today. I think I'll just cut it off here uh, um, and go watch some football. And uh, so you guys have yourselves a good day. Uh, remember the contest that I started last night? There's a, a couple of prizes from the video that I had last night, uh, me talking about what's coming up in, in 2020. So go check those out if you haven't already. That would make three prizes you're in line for if you, uh, if you check that out and then, um, and then you enter the contest. So, and everybody's in that now. Like uh, last month uh, at Christmas time, I, I kept people out because they'd already won, but we're starting fresh this year. Everybody's in, in the pool this time, so everybody's available to enter. So take care, everyone. This is uh, General Hand Grenade and Panzer King from the War Room in Prince George, British Columbia, and we're out of here.